no idea where this is going to go. Continue. <laughs> well, you know, you you don't know who you don't know who might be secretly recording. So, like, it's not a bad uh, idea to have the official recording. Yeah, that's right. I think it pops up on your end. It pops up on my end, right? It says recording right there. So, yeah, I'm okay with that. I don't secretly. Just in case record. there's any nefarious characters out there trying to do it on the down low. The thing is, I've been using this because I've been using Zoom. I started Zoom. Uh, at the start of the pandemic, I'm ahead, I was a president of our Kinsman Club, actually, in Saskatoon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and we had to switch to meetings really fast. Nobody knew how to do a virtual meeting. And so we're like, well, get a Zoom account. So I just got a Zoom account just for just for those meetings. And then yeah. I started talking to my friends through Zoom. I said, ah, this is so much fun. And then I was like, yeah. why don't I just do a podcast? Because these are, that's all these are, these conversations. That's all, the podcasts that I listen to are just like this, mm-hmm. conversations mm-hmm. with my friends. So, yeah. so I... Um, I was like, well, I'll just keep it. So I just, I've just been keeping it ever since. And no, I try it's, to talk it's to a few so people. nice actually to have these sort of things recorded. And also, I don't know why I didn't start sooner. Like, I mean, I've been recording, you know, conversations for over a year, maybe two, maybe three years now. I don't know. We'll say two and a half years. No, it's, a, it's been the longest year ever. 2020 hasn't ended 2019 yet. 2019 right? is when I started. <laughs> 2019, 2021, okay. 2022. Okay. Oh, so I think it will be. Is that three years? I'm so bad. With maybe that. I came across you about maybe a year ago. Yeah. Maybe okay. So, like so I've been recording for a number of years, a couple years, couple and a half years, and <laughs> it's only recently because I I used to always watch back my my conversations for editing because I don't know I was really nervous about certain things and a little bit more like I want this to go a certain way and I right. and so I'm gonna cut this bit out and I'm gonna oh too many oh. pauses. So I was a little bit um neurotic a little bit about it. Yeah. And um and so I would rewatch them all and so I definitely was aware of what was being said. I don't do that as much now. But the few little bits of say I usually want rewatch the first 10 or 15 minutes just to make sure everything's going mm. fine. And so when I do look back, again, this is more recently, there are, and I never noticed this before, and I was watching them all, but, but um, this is something that I've just realized, like, and I don't know if maybe I was just too intensely, like, I'm really on, so I'm going to be careful about how I say things and what I say, but now I'm way more relaxed. And so now I'm not watching what I'm saying. And as I watch back, there are things that are said and that happened that I completely missed Yeah. from, from the person I'm interviewing where I'm like, I think that there's one thing where I said something about, I don't like change and it was just banter and it was with Paul Vanderclay and he was like conservative yeah. and I didn't hear it. Oh. I completely like went <laughs> over my head. And then when I rewatched it, it's like I see myself go on yeah. being like, what? Liberal no, pastor. anyway, like being like, what? You know, I missed it. Like I missed it. I completely <laughs> didn't hear it. But then here on the yeah. screen and in my here ears, I hear this and it happened. And and screen me has no idea. And I'm like, I was there. How did I how did I miss that? And it happened yeah. again with something else uh, recently. But this didn't happen in other times earlier. And I, I wonder if it's because I'm more relaxed, but it also just shows me like, oh, reality is not, is not like objective. Like, yeah, that's you, right. You, like, I missed even words, a few little words. How much is different from yeah. what I perceive? Like you see, you see, don't see with your eyes, you perceive with your mind. And that's, that's a line but from I know, a I was focused, gorilla song. I was focused and you, hear, you listen with your mind and your mind could be elsewhere while you're. Your yeah, eardrums yeah, are working perfectly fine, elsewhere. but yeah, yeah you're yeah. not listening properly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think listen to what you want to hear. You look for those patterns. Yeah, that, that's right? the thing that Verveke says, salience landscape. Like, what's what's relevant to you? Rel- right. Relevance realization. I don't know. I'm just saying all these things. Yeah, John Verveke says that. Yeah, so yeah. Um, that's one thing I actually, you know, over. I've been doing this since uh, fall 2020, I guess I started doing this. Okay. And uh, I did maybe... Well, for me, I just pandemic. I'm very extrovert. Well, you're you're very extroverted, so you can't understand this. But yeah. I um, I just really miss having connections with people. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so I'm going to use this to connect with people. And then, like I said, I just want to talk to my friends, and then I'll t- have good conversations with friends or family or colleagues or my neighbors. And then you get to record it. But 
what I found was I listened to these things over and over again. Like I would listen to it four, five, six times before I even started editing it because I just mm-hmm. love listening to the conversation. And I, mm-hmm. same as Mew, I knew early on I was missing so much when I have these conversations with people. And it goes over my head or I would say something. And it's clear that I did not understand what the, this person was talking about. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's really helped me with my conversation um, awareness with my communication technique, with my listening skills, just mm-hmm. doing this. And mm-hmm. like you, when I first did this, I was like really nervous. And, and now mm-hmm. it's like, well, I'll just go do it and, and see what happens and, not, and not, not worry about it. And sometimes I have a really good conversation, listen to it, it's like, eh, it's okay. And other times I feel I just have a terrible conversation. But I listened to it again, and I was like, wow, that was really insightful. Okay, That's okay, I get that. Also, I'm going to turn my light down because I feel like it's too bright. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going to leave this. Cr- I'm just going to. That's I'm, fine. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving this in, Andrea. <laughs> I, okay, for fun. Yeah, just not taking it away. Times. Not cutting it's this part It's just because, out. okay. It's just because I, my face, I'm like, I'm so white. What the heck? Right, um, me better. too. Well, I'm actually quite I'm red. I have a heater on down here. I'm in my basement, so... It's I cold, so I have a too, but it's cold, really? and I didn't have the heater on. So now, I, yeah. I know it'll get too hot, and I don't have to be yeah. reaching over. And I might, so you turn my my face where I'm blushing right now, and wearing a red shirt is making me, and I'm a winter, so I just have to do that. Well, you know, you know what? <laughs> but if you alter the color, then at least I'm not going to be like ghostly white if you don't want to be as red. Oh, <laughs> you know? I'm not getting That's into the, the color alterations on my oh, YouTube videos. Okay, I'm okay, not I doing do. that. That's way I, too I, much. For I me. do that. I, I use Final Cut Pro actually. Um, oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I use it, but I'm not very practiced at it. Like I only have my few little things that I know how to do. Mm-hmm. I need to look up more and learn more about it. It's, yeah. But it's, it's. I actually really hate editing. Like I yeah. actually wish that I was, if, if only to be able to outsource. Like I wouldn't even yeah. care about really keeping excess income. I'd be like. Can someone be my producer, please? But just to, just bring up the quality it. of your production. And, uh, it, and then, yeah, it, yeah. Like, you should know how to edit, but you shouldn't have to do it if, you know, like. If you don't want, I know. It's yeah. not a bad thing. Like, I, I, I yeah. did something like, oh, I've learned. I, I learned how to do this. It's not really. Yeah. Rarely is it the conversation that I'm nervous about. I mean, always there's sort of like, oh, I hope that it's settled <laughs> what we're going to talk about. Because right. I have very specific things I want to talk about with people right. and so I sort of I'm like I hope I have it you know right. the, the little points I have in my head or where I just jot it down I rarely consult it after but I just need to have it like ordered right and uh, th- I, but that, that's only like a little nervous not much but d- depending on who the person is if it's higher profile like right. I, I'm pretty pretty nervous well but, you like, know with, like with Peugeot I was pretty nervous but, but well I, you should I, it's, be it's, yeah it's the, it's the editing that frustrates me the most Right. Well, I'm going to introduce you because we're 15 minutes in or whatever. And oh, no. I'm just like, you all know me. <laughs> no way, man. Hi. This is awesome. I love it. So, anyways, you're on Andrea with the Banks. Um, they're, you off, are, they're off to the side today. They're off to the side. Yeah, normally I notice that you got your cute little hat on there, too. You are a, first and foremost, a uh, vintage fashion icon, icon, as far as I can tell. Icon? Well, I don't know. Oh, I mean, like... Oh, you are, though. I follow you on Instagram. Marilyn. It's awesome. I love it. I'll be there with Audrey. Like, I'll just be... And Catherine Hepburn. Like, I'll be up there. <laughs> you're oh, keeping I mean, that you look want, alive, you though. Like you're, there. you're keeping it going. And I think we need people like that. I'm doing like the that. Newsboy hat today. Oh, I just love it. The best. I should tell you, I have these vintage-esque looking glasses. I wore my most vintage I glasses. I need horn-rimmed glasses. Yeah. I did that I, just I for like you. Those. Yeah, I don't Aww. normally wear these, so but I thought I gotta go as vintage you. as possible, even though these are brand yeah. new. But but nice. no, no. Well, I mean, I actually have a pair. I don't right. wear them usually for the the show. <laughs> then for you're the all show, you're also. But I do wear them for driving. You're uh, amateur podcaster and YouTuber. I subscribe to both of your channels. Your uh, your oh yeah, uh, Andre with the bangs is your YouTube channel, and then yeah, what's your and then the uh, podcast is she wonders why. She wonders why. Yeah. With Andrew it's, at the it's bank. vague so. enough and specific <laughs> enough for me. That's how I got it. And how we know each other, um, well, at least how I know you initially as well, because as you we kind of alluded to there, um, we have a lot of the same interests in terms of, um, I think you're going on a nice little spiritual journey in your life right mm-hmm. now, and you're exploring, and, and so am I. For me, it kind of started with 
Jordan Peterson kind of started it off, but then from him, yeah. all these people that he introduced me to was was very fascinating. And then I've kind of moved on from Peterson, even though I, I still kind of pay attention to him. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, all these religious and, and psychological people um, out there making these great YouTube videos, and and and, and notice that you were starting to, well, you're just a, a normie like me. We have no expert like specific no expertise, expertise in this, right? Yeah. But you've been. Yeah. You, you more so than I, you actually been going and trying to engage a lot of these people and right. having conversations with them and be able to have some really nice, I think really cool conversations with some very, very interesting people, people that I respect uh, online and stuff like that. So that's how I kind of know you. And then, and then we ended up being part of a discord server. Yeah. Study group. <laughs> study group. I know. It, oh, it's. I am so ashamed at how badly I've it. kept that up. Uh, it's because it's just, okay, so it's just the group. It's running the Lord of Spirits discussion group, and it just people are really flaky, and then I'm really flaky, and then the play dates for my son work out on Thursdays. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you're a mom and a wife, too, so you have that yes, as well. I'm, I'm I have dad three and boys, a, yeah. Three little boys? Oh, I love it. I have two little boys. Well, they're a little bit older. I think mine are nine and ten, so they're... No, no, mine is nine, set, my nine eight, and five. Nine, eight, five. Okay, so not much older. The your literal so, one. So my, my oldest yeah. will be ten. So it looks... It actually... They're 21 months apart, so they kind of look like they're only a year apart for, for just a little bit. And then they, right. the, the, the two years sort of lapses. So this February, my oldest will be ten. Right. And, so okay. the, and, and then ten my and youngest will be turning six, so it'll be like... 10 8 6 like but yeah. right now it's 9 8 5 and they keep you busy right like that's just kind of oh yes like right alone. now they're upstairs like the, my husband's out and so hopefully he'll be home soon <laughs> so i can hear them but they're not bad uh, it's just you know rambunctious and you're they're like, kids oh, the they're kids they're gonna be doing their own yeah. thing and that's fine my mom uh, my wife took the, uh, the boys out uh, to the mall because it's oh, minus nice. That's nice. 30 out or whatever it is. And so yeah, it's the uh, same. Yeah, same here. There's a uh, mini golf at this mall. So they're going to try to do some mini golf there. Oh, so that's fun. So she let me, she, she kind of knows it's kind of nice. Like, again, they're not bugging me, but they always like, or the TV's on over there and they're watching YouTube and playing video games and laughing. So, so anyways, you do that kind of stuff too. So, but yeah, we have this, uh, we part of this discord, discord, if people don't know, discord is sort of a, it's a way it's sort of a, communication discussion software mm -hmm. portal it's usually mostly used for video gamers actually but for us we follow uh, one of our right, yeah. our mutual favorite podcasts is called the lord of spirits and it's with these <laughs> wonderful orthodox priests who are just huge nerds in really uh are. understanding the the ancient stories that are found in the bible but beyond the bible like understanding like the middle eastern texts and the cultures and religions of those times and and, and then try to bring it sort of relevance. How does how's that mm. affect us today as people? And and it's really cool because these guys do big deep dives into mm -hmm. to uh, yeah, real deep, know, real different deep terms, dives, many you know. hours. Yeah. And so there's a bunch of us other nerds who kind of enjoyed it, and then then you brought and then yeah, as part of this Discord server, and you brought up the idea of having a sort of a discussion group because it goes mm -hmm. on every two weeks. The they have this podcast, and so every alternating weeks we try to try to meet and talk and we meet with people all around the world which is kind of cool and it is cool yeah yeah, yeah no i i i like finding like-minded individuals where you have the topic and you all are enthusiastic about that topic and then then you just go, just go yeah I, i'm getting a lot out of it but again for myself i was just i was always having meetings whenever we're having these groups and then I, was I know it's it's and, when it works like yeah. it, I it comes in like you know fits in waves of how available people are but mm -hmm. and I'm part of other discord groups too um, yeah yeah I do book clubs there and and I go when I when I can but it's no it's nice it's nice to have um a little something social especially I think it's mostly because of the the coronavirus stuff and um, people just looking kind of to reach out, yeah. Like when it works, you know. So that's very, very interesting times. It is, yeah. I've been finding this last year has been it's been a challenge and frustrating, but in a lot of ways also I've grown a lot. Um, sort of taking care of myself, and I think, uh, and then just and sort of my mental health has been improving, or at least been 
it's been managed a lot better because of a lot of large part because I'm actually trying to engage with other people and hear ideas and mm. um, that sort of thing too. So this Lord of Spirits group is really interesting because it's it's a it's a way to to study the Bible. And I mentioned in our little conversations before we had um, that I was I just actually just finished up today the very last Bible in a Year podcast day. So this Catholic priest Father Mike Schmitz was reading every day passages from the bible there's sort of a study group and then he kind of explains yeah. and wow, so he's good started with genesis you, so we That's just finished so off revelation today Woo-hoo! and so i've i can i can That's actually say i've read the bible and did a whole study listen to a thing on the bible and okay yeah, it's pretty cool i have a thing about that because i my husband and i did that a couple years ago and okay. by a couple i think actually like seven years ago like <laughs> I don't, like i say a couple it yeah. was actually quite a number of years ago and we did it and it was good. And we were, you know, it, you know, I kind of had it chronologically so that the, mm-hmm. so, you know, when you're going through this, the Psalms, you're also going through um, the certain books of like David and then the prophets, you know, I think it kind of mix, it mixes up with what is happening. Yeah. Um, so you're not just reading a Psalm all the time and it all meshes together. That's right. But that's what this guy was good. doing too. Yeah. 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 So it, it was good, but I honestly, like, I think it's because of the Protestant in me. I thought I would mm. feel so holy when I read the whole Bible <laughs> and I didn't. Like I thought I would feel so good about myself. Like, so I don't want to say so holy, but like, you know, look at I did it. I'm I'm doing the thing that, and that's the <laughs> evangelical push is like read yeah. the Bible daily, and I'm like reading it in a year, and I did it, and my husband and I did it together, so it was like a little bit of a community aspect too, with yeah. our whole church. You know, the whole church mm. did it together too. Yeah. And like I did not feel accomplished. If anything, I just was like, oh, um, I'm a man of unclean lips. Oh. <laughs> like it, just yeah. sort of, it didn't do anything to make me feel m- much better, and I don't know if that's good maybe that's good i don't know it just well i tell you, you you don't feel as good as you think you will so how do you feel i feel full of sin and then i'm going to hell oh, that's what okay. i feel <laughs> okay, so that's the man of and then you're well, the, you know, the, well it's like a um, stone to, to refine your lips <laughs> it wouldn't be a catholic reading of the bible if you didn't feel guilty about something so right. um that's a big part of it so i feel i feel though that the story is um i understand sort of the the story feels more complete now. I can kind of get the references. Well, the New, New Testament, how, how much you reference the Old Testament, which I think is fantastic. Right. It's nice to have a chronological storyline that goes from from Adam through to Noah to, uh, you know, Jacob and Jacob and, and then Moses and, and kind of down that way and understand the kings, you know. I never knew what the Maccabees were. I never understood that. I've heard of, like, oh, Hanukkah, but I didn't understand the, the context. It's in between, yeah. Which it was, or, or the uh, yeah. Babylonian exile, and, and where the prophets were, like Jeremiah was in Babylon, you know, and, and right. those kind Who of things. Where? Yeah. I didn't I didn't get that before. So now I kind of have that sort of context, which I never you had before. You have a before. bit of a chronology then, yeah. 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 And then I liked listening to in the New Testament. I like listening to all the letters. Is like, you go to church? Well, I haven't don't go to church since COVID started because I hate wearing masks. But um, I used to go to church anyways. But you hear the first and second reading and yada yada. Get a little snippets of the, the stories. But now I get to hear the whole letters of all the apostles, and it's very fascinating because it actually brings them to life because these are actually mm. just people, mm-hmm. like really not much different than you and I in terms of what in terms of just their feelings and their kind of concerns, but they're kind of writing to each other and supporting each other and, and uh, trying to figure this kind of stuff out and just kind of makes you feel more in touch with them and understand them a little bit better, how that was yeah. and and why yeah. we believe the things or at least why the stories came out the way they came out. So I found that to be a lot more profound. I don't think I feel better. I just feel that I'm more knowledgeable and that I'm probably yeah. going to go to hell sooner. So. Okay. Well- <laughs> I mean, but luckily his grace covers all, um, if you accept it, you know, if, uh, well, I don't know. I, I think it's, it sort of, it showed, it reveals what I had as my image of a good Christian. Hmm. Read your Bible daily. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently that's not enough, which is no. fine. You need help. But... You need, you need support in that. And I think you need someone to give me guidance on these sort of things. I think the... The Bible on its own, because I did try to read the Bible when I was a kid. I think a lot of nerdy people try to read the Bible, and it just, and then you get it's stuck in Leviticus. And, 
Yeah. And it's bad. And, yeah. Numbers and then, is worse. Like, actually. Like, yeah. It actually gets even more boring. And Jeremiah just breaks you down. It's just... Oh, just gives right. it to you hard. So it's yeah. it's a bit much. So it's nice to have that sort of um, support on that. And, and, and because I listen to these kind of things, and it's it's amazing actually. Every day when he did his little readings, it's like God, it's got he's speaking to me right now. Like he's he's talking about things that I'm going through right now. And it, it it wasn't just once or twice. It was like happened over and over and over again. Like it just what the reading was. I was like, man, I could totally exactly. I know exactly what he's talking about. And. Mm. It also, I should mention as well too, it also kind of gave me a bit of hope because I found that, well, like as Homer Simpson once said, you know, it's like, oh, the Bible, what a preachy book. Everyone's a sinner, except for that guy. But, but the thing is, every, <laughs> everyone is a sinner in that book. But God is, they're emphasizing that God has a use or a purpose for all of us, even the sinners, even our sins. Mm-hmm. There's a purpose for all these kind of things. Mm-hmm. And if it's, it, the whole point is kind of, in the Bible, we see he's trying to draw you back to mm-hmm. to God somehow. Like it, it's, mm-hmm. you're trying to learn from these people. Everyone, everyone, everyone has a purpose. So I don't feel so bad. Like you know, Moses screwed up, and David was kind well, of a oh jerk, yeah, you know? yeah. And, it, well, well, it, it is oh, sort of helps bad. because people point at Christians and they're like, "Why aren't you more like Jesus?" Mm. You know, and then <laughs> we're like, "Well, we can point at." all of those guys before us why aren't you better and it's like oh we're all fallen the whole point is that we're not like how we're supposed to be exactly yeah Yeah. even popes aren't and 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 there isn't don't abandon hope it it, it's always (laughs) don't abandon hope is the point it's just because you see like i've i've heard a lot of people like lately be like oh and you call yourself a christian and it's like you could see that and you call yourself a king of israel well actually that's more like typical to be fallen (laughs) <laughs> be a jerk. Like, and you call yourself a follower of the one true God. It's like yeah. God, and it's like no, they're all, they're all fallen. So yeah. of course we're gonna be just as fallen. And but we have the Spirit to help yeah. us, and we have um, guidance through the the Word. And and um, yeah, I'm just so preachy sounding right now. But it is, I guess well, I that's, I need yeah. it for me. Like it's okay, mm. it's okay. We I tell this to my kids because I always am afraid of failing. And um, which is maybe why I take so long to get started on new, new, mm. new hobbies and things. I was saying before you started recording how I, I like had like podcast coming soon on my Twitter account for six months before I actually did it. Yeah. But um, but I I I think I'm a, yeah just it, it, it's through childhood you know just certain things like oh like I don't want to fail because then I lose you know but I tell my kids like oh it's okay we made a mistake no big deal like but I try to do that for all the things like oh it's okay like failing is learning. You know, yeah. it's not negative. Yeah, I've t- been really good with that with my kids, actually, because I kind of grew up in a household where you screw up and you're in trouble. And it's, mm-hmm. and they kind of, kind of wore me. And I think it, you know, and my parents, you know, like they did their best, but like they, they're they human beings too and, and stuff like that. And I know mom and dad, like they're in their age now, they're like, they feel really guilty about, well, sometimes you feel guilty about the way they raised us. I'm like, you did your best and that's fine. Like we're alive and you're, yeah. and you're still, you know, you love us and you know they had a lot of good positive aspects to it so with my kids i tried to tell them like you know it's okay to fail like it, and when mm-hmm. i screw up in front of my kids i go tell them like you know you know i screwed up like if i screwed up in disciplining them or uh, doing things like that i said you know i'm sorry or yelling at them or like whatever exactly. no no it's so good temper. for kids to see of course it is grown-ups yeah. because a lot of the time, the age that we grew up in and like our parents grew up in, it's like, it was like bad for, like, you wouldn't want to admit fault. And that, yeah. cause that, especially on the, like the ma- masculine end. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's like, you don't want to, you don't apologize. You don't want to say you were wrong. Yeah. Um, where, where I, and it is, there are some things where like, I was just reading, I'm reading Lord of the Rings to my kids. Nice. We read the Hobbit in the summer and like now we're on to fellowship. We're almost done. We're on like page 460. I'm like, Sweet. whoa, guys, we're getting through this. Yeah. But there is the it talks about, it talks about how old Aragorn is. No, 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 no. It was how long how long it had been since Lord uh, since Aragorn had been to Lothlorien. It was like what, eight and thirty yeah. years. And yeah. I was like, oh, so like eighty three. And then, and my my son was like, oh, I, I was like, do you guys know how how long it was? And I let them 
guess. Yeah. And my my middle son, my my eight year old, is like, oh, like thirty eight, and I was like, mm, close. I think it's like eighty three. And then my husband's like, no, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's thirty eight. Yeah. Eight and they're eight and thirty. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I actually felt like so dumb, and I had to be like, oh, right. Well, sometimes mommy makes mistakes too, boys. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay to tell them. You feel dumb. Yeah. I like to admit it sometimes. It it sucks, (laughs) but it's good. I actually, this was one of those, this is is a good thing. Mommy makes mistakes too, and that's okay. Yeah, it's okay, you know, and it's 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 all right to to admit it, and for them to admit it. The point is not about them making mistakes. It's, it's anything, teaches, the Bible teaches you anything. It's about you coming up and falling, but then also getting back up. Right, getting and together. and coming back into alignment, right? And it's that, not the past, the point of no return. In. Yeah, through repentance or saying you're sorry or just making amends or whatever it is. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah, I learned a lot from the, reading that this year. So it's been quite helpful. And then again, with Lord of the Spirits picking up that kind of stuff too, it's been really helpful. You say so you're connecting with a few people. You connected with uh, Benjamin Boyce. So Benjamin Boyce, um. Mm-hmm. He, he was a he was a student at Evergreen. Is that what he was? Yeah, Evergreen yeah. College in in Washington State. Yeah, and there was a big um, sort of on campus kerfuffle pro- kerfuffle protest against <laughs> well everything pretty much, and the students basically took over the school. Yeah, and there was in the a name of critical race theory and critical race justice. theory. And Brett Weinstein yeah. was a was a uh, prof on there. He's a biology prof, a geneticist. Yeah. And Benjamin Boyce yeah. was a um, student, but he was kind of documenting it as this was going yeah, on. Yeah, he sort of accidentally did because he was he ran the uh, he did like uh, like the audio visual stuff for recording mm. like like things for them like for the school. So okay. he actually didn't even he didn't even know the Weinstein's actually when he was a student okay. there. But so he sure. he just ended up. Um, yeah, recording things like as a like as a little job, I think. Like, oh, okay. You know, and it was his last year, and so I don't remember exactly why he was like, "Okay, I'm going to continue documenting it on my own." But I think he just saw what was happening and wanted to yeah. be like, "Okay, what is happening?" And like, let's talk with some of the students who have been wronged. Um, anyway, so yeah, so that's where he started. But he's doing a, he's doing his own podcast slash YouTube channel. Um, continuing concerns that he had from that but also just i think he just has sort of wonderings like i do you know where yeah you find people on twitter and you just interview interesting people on twitter yeah twitter, he's, you know? he's 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 an interesting guy because he just find these people and all he does all it just seems he just wants to have a conversation with people it's kind of he's very attentive um in his interviews he has been really focusing in on the um gender identity and right. Um, transgender issues and the the transgender sort of piece of the culture and from what I remember it's been it's a few years ago that he told me about it but I think it's because this is a bit of a sort of making history kind of thing like not people haven't done transgender in this way yeah like ever it had, I mean there have been instances obviously throughout history but not at the rate and not in the not for the reasons and not for all of this yeah so he's sort of doing like uh, his own like looking into this one aspect of the culture war i suppose yeah um but i i actually whenever i inter- interview him i've i've spoken to him once about evergreen but ever since i i just enjoy talking to him about um he's a writer so i talked to him about world building and um oh really or I... other symbolism okay. things yeah yeah sim- okay. or other just symbolic things similar to what i speak about with jonathan peugeot just, I think I talked about iconoclasm with him at one point. Um, yeah. I just, he is, he's, he, he has a lot of other things to talk about other than the culture war. He just ends up going in that sort of vein a lot. But yeah, yeah, and he's a bit of an expert just in terms of his own experience with it. So we kind of yeah. Why, why do we why do we bring him up? Oh yeah, because he helped me get started on my YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm talking. I, I'm going to talk about a few people that you've talked to. That yeah, I have sure. sort of interest in as well too, and kind of how those went, and you're doing that right now. So, with Benjamin, so yeah, that's that's kind of cool. That yeah, I didn't realize he was a writer. He's an interesting guy, mm-hmm. and and um, 
and he said though he he he'd help you out a little bit with your he YouTube did yeah, he game. contacted me yes yeah. because he sort of likes to just scout out people who are interested um in in a similar fashion that he is that he thinks he can maybe like lend a hand like i i don't know how often he does this but eventually i think he wants to sort of be a content producer where he helps other people go out and like do the thing that he's doing now but he, you have to get quite big to like kind of officially do that you know but yeah. um but he started off yeah i i had my on my um about in my profile on my twitter spiel i said something about my youtube channel coming soon yeah for six months and so then he <laughs> wrote me hey so is that youtube channel happening like do you want to chat about it do you need any help <laughs> And I was like, okay. And I was vaguely aware of him. I didn't really know him super well, but I'd seen right. him around. We'd followed each other. Okay. Um, that's actually okay. the story with most of my interviews is I'd been in this sort of Jordan Peterson and then and then into the rest of the IDW um, right. intellectual dark web space of Twitter. Right. And um, and then we just ended up like, yeah, following each other. And then I, did, I knew that he did some interviews. I didn't really see much of what he did, but I... I was aware of him and, and which is good because I probably would have been like way too starstruck if I knew like, oh, you're pretty big in like culture war space. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. So that was kind of okay. helpful that I, I only knew of him and not super well. Um, but but then I, you know, of course, I was like, oh, I looked up his stuff and I was like, oh, you do, you do interviews. You're kind of doing what I want to do. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, that's so that's kind of what I brought him up. Yeah. He pretty much helped me with the technical stuff. He actually like, gave me a few pointers but i he he mainly was like a sort of like here's how you use final cut pro here's like what you'll be just technical stuff for running a channel which was super helpful because it actually yeah. turns out that the interviewing part i didn't i don't actually need super guidance yeah <laughs> super guidance it's pretty, well, it's pretty straightforward i'm chatty yeah. Yeah, I'm. I just have a an, an itch of a of a thought that I need to be figured <laughs> out, and I find someone to help me answer those questions. And it was the yeah. and it is the technical stuff I hated. It sucks, but it was yeah. nice that I had him to help me. So, well, by doing yeah. the technical stuff, maybe that's the that's the price you pay to give yourself access to a lot of people, right? So, like, because it gives you much. a little bit of credibility that you're willing to have these conversations and put them up in a, in a reasonable manner. In yeah. a digestible manner on online somewhere. So um, rather than just yeah. some random yeah, totally. ranting at things in your basement to your, yourself. I know. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> you know, he gave me suggestions of like which type of microphones and like oh, okay. I've actually upgraded yeah. since. Um, but, uh, you know, on camera and like, all these. Yeah. Just t like I said, the technical. Um, but it's, it, yeah, it, it's sort of the stuff that I would have not even had any. I don't even think I was going to do a YouTube channel. I think I was going to only do a podcast. But then he was like, oh, no, no, you should like just try. And I was like, OK, I guess I'll try because <laughs> I didn't I, I didn't understand yeah. how to put the put the audio with the visual. I was like, that's too hard. It just uh. So the fact that I had someone to help me with these sort of difficult parts and I'm I do better on YouTube anyway. Um, I think that uh, the algorithm works ish for me you know like this, okay like yeah. I, especially for the space i was in there's a jordan peterson video i put out early on that went i semi-viral it was like around a hundred thousand views like it was oh, wow yeah, that's only pretty good. Like my fifth or sixth video that i ever Jeez. had done yeah and the thing that was funny is i actually did a really poor job of it at first and then um i i called called Benjamin or texted him being like, ah, it's, I, it's so bad. People are telling me the quality is bad, but they weren't being mean. Like, that's the thing. Like I've been really lucky or blessed with like people were like, Hey, like no offense, but like, it just looks mm -hmm. like things aren't working for this one. Like the quality yeah. isn't great. And so then he was like, calm down. Like, let's just like take a breath and just redo it. <laughs> I'm like, but I already have like 50 views. He's like 50 views is not something to worry about. Right. Okay. And so I did, I redid it. And then I got a hundred thousand views. That's it. Oh, I should get what I reviewed. Wow. Like, I mean, not right away, but it was one of those, yeah. like, it was cause it was right it always after popped the, up in the algorithm, massacre eh? in New Zealand. Yeah, it was, it was, it was in the, in New Zealand. Somebody 
yeah. went to a mosque and killed people. And um, and then, then this one bookstore took Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life off of their shelves yes. in the wake of that. And I and I don't so usually stupid. do hot takey things, but that was one that I was like, "What? They have Mein Kampf available, but not tw- like Twelve Rules." Twelve for Rules life? is a and so <laughs> yes. Ridiculous. Anyway, so this video, this video just caught the right. the wave because it was it was the right time, you know. Yeah. I didn't mean to, but it and I also titled it accidentally in a sort of. Um, I think I, I I didn't mean to make it sound controversial, but I think I titled it um what's the matter with jordan peterson or something like that or what's the something something i didn't I, it sounded like i could be against him maybe but i actually wasn't i was being ironic right and so people who are haters were like yeah oh wait no she's against it or she's not against him <laughs> and then people were like whoa what a sweet a second is she going against my peterson oh wait no it's for him okay so like, you was, learned yeah, something about viral marketing a little bit i did but i never too, right? could i never did it again yeah it never, it never happened yeah. again. Like I, I never, it just was one of those chances, but and, it's how yeah. I got my first thousand um, subscribers okay. on my YouTube channel. Yeah. And so that's what I mean about like YouTube kind of did work better for, and also my podcast, I kind of am bad at getting it updated along with my YouTube channel. I am getting it updated now, but um, at the same mm-hmm. time, but you have to, I have to like upload it separately and get it all done separately. So yeah, I'm trying to work on being on it. I'm really bad at marketing myself, though. I'm really <laughs> bad at that. Like, I'm good at um, finding yeah. people to interview and getting interviews out. I'm a little slower at that least lately, but I'm really bad at marketing because I just hate trying to get things from people. But you are you're good. You are like you said though. You are good at like reaching out to people and people do mm-hmm. respond to you, which is kind of mm-hmm. nice. Twitter so, is the main thing for that. Twitter like, initially, really? Hey? Yeah. Twitter initially, initially, yes. yeah. Like the the um like there's this one scientist i got named sean carroll Mm -hmm. um he's uh, i mean he's been on joe rogan like that's sort of a that's how i saw him right he's just one of these um sort of like astrophysicist people who's like is he an astrophysicist or is he just a regular physicist i can't remember oh it's so horrible that i've interviewed him i don't remember (laughs) but like he's kind of big like he's okay. kind of a big deal. Yeah, if you're on he's Joe Rogan, the, you're gonna get some attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of the best spoken physicists okay. in the world, because you know, like he knows how to speak so that the regular folk can understand. Right. So that's really good if you want to be a bit of a public scientist, if you can relate to the the regular folk. And so it was through a friend on Twitter that he put me in touch with with um, Sean, and then okay. I was so nervous about that. But then at the same time, that was a different, same kind of nerves, but different kind of nerves. I spoke with uh, Jonathan Pajot, and that was through a friend that we did a double interview of um, Jonathan Pajot. So your friend and, knew Jonathan um, Pajot? Who's, or... Yeah, so my friend, his name's Mercury Black, and he okay, runs yeah. the Sorting Myself Out YouTube channel. Oh, okay. okay yeah. So he took yeah. over that one. That one was someone else's. This was like back, this guy ran it. The guy that he took it over from um, Rat was like a Peterson blow up. Like he did a sort of like picking up my room, you know, kind of thing, yeah. like sorting myself, you know, he, so sorting myself out like that, you know, Peterson is like sort yourself out, you know, like, yeah. so this guy sort of wanted to do it. He wanted to do the things Peterson was talking about, but this is early on. And as Peterson grew, this guy's channel grew, but then it just got to be too big for him. And then he kind of right. had one of the other community members who was this guy, Mercury, take it over but this this other fellow inter- interviewed Peugeot early on okay like way early when he was yeah. just first talking with Peterson okay so even though um Jonathan didn't know my friend Mercury but he did know the uh, the channel so that's why I think he gave him the time of the day and and then my okay. friend Mercury was um like hey you wanted to talk with Peugeot I remember do you want to do you, you know, and the thing is, I actually wrote Pajo. Like, I wrote him, and he didn't write back. Oh yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. So he he didn't know me. Like, this no. is the thing, and this is what I've learned. You've got to sort of get in on the social media communities of these people, so that they actually know who you are, um, or get connections with people who know them and who are willing to go up to bat for you. So that's <laughs> yeah. what happened with this. So with so Merck like asked Pajo if he'd be okay with it, and Pajo said that yeah, it was fine. And so then I got to, you know, sit in and do most of the talking. Mercury was really kind and let me be like the main interviewer. Wow. So, 
you that's insist helpful. you're a pretty good talker. That's why, though. You, you well, know, I was so in the going. middle of my space of like, ah, symbolism. <laughs> like, I need, I need more clarification. So there's uh, people I was, here. I was like thirsty for it. I mentioned Jonathan Peugeot on my little podcast a bunch of times. It's somebody I followed. He's a he's from Quebec. He's Canadian. It's weird background. He's evangelical background, but now he's an Orthodox Christian. Um, and icon he's an, carver. And he's an icon carver. He might be like, well, uh, as of like a year ago, he's probably the only one in North America that carved these little icons for well, an Orthodox uh, adherence and, and that sort of thing too. Um, but he's a very interesting man because he's really re well read and he he's, his interest is in symbolism that's found within, well, in the Bible, but also how uh, symbolism in the, in the church also reflects that of reality. That's kind of his thesis. So like, mm -hmm. you know, Genesis, the question that is asked of him, do you think Genesis occurred? You know, he's like, not only do I think it occurred, I think it's going on every day. You know, or the question oh, is, I know. You know, or so Revelation, you think Revelation the apocalypse is real. He's like, I think it's real. I think it's happening all the time because he sees it as a sort of a pattern of reality that the church reflects as much as anything else, right? Like it's, and it's fractal, like he's, you know, from the microcosm to the macrocosm yeah, where he yeah, kind of yeah. talks. I find him very fascinating. He's, he's really that interesting. That's a good guy. sum up of him, by the way. Very oh, good. yeah. Oh, I found him like right after, you know, I never did see that Pepe. He did talk with Jordan Peterson on Pepe. I never did either. I just didn't. It didn't, it didn't interest me because I'm like, I don't really care about the stupid frog. But then I caught him later on. I was like, wow, this guy's really interesting. So I started following him quite a bit and uh, following his channel. So I was an early adherent to his work. Here's a couple of things. I've met him twice in Saskatoon. Right, right. Did he come through doing a talk? He did a icon carving class at this sort of a traditional oh. Catholic church in, in Saskatoon. Oh. I'm not a member of the church. I actually happened to run into an old childhood friend, a member of that church. And then while he was doing that, he gave a talk. And then he kind of oh. posted on Twitter that he's going to be, give his talk. And he did this two years in a row. It was the last, it was the first Thursday of February for two years in a row. So mm -hmm. 2019, 2018. So as I mentioned before, I'm a member of the Kinsman Club in town. And, and we do a big, huge sports dinner, like a massive one every year. We bring in all these big hockey players and celebrities in. And the night before this event, us members get to hang out with all these celebrities, and it's kind of a fun thing for us to do. Mm -hmm. Well, it so happened that Pajot was giving us talk on that same Thursday night before, at the same night that we're going to meet all these people. So I was going to meet all these like famous Toronto Maple Leaf hockey players. Yeah, Some yeah. of them are, are huge fans of. And I was like, Shit, how am I going to go see Pajot on this? So I went to see Pajot and I had to like leave early. I was like, oh, I just wanted to see him. I shook his hand. I'm mad. And I don't think he'd seen that before. He'd give these talks. And then also had this weird guy who just sees him online, walk in, talking to him. I don't think he's, I don't think for him, he experienced that too much at that point okay. when it first did that. Because for him, he's like, he's kind of giving me a weird look. Like, who's this weirdo right. walking in? Next year, I saw him and he's, he started exploding in popularity. Right, right. Same, now it's getting a little more normal. Yeah. It's the same sort of yeah. night, though, too. So I had to go see him and then run out <laughs> to my yeah, my yeah, dinner yeah. event. But for me, like, yeah, there's all these Hall of Famer rich hockey players, but I want to see. Pajot. Jonathan, Jonathan Pajot. Icon Carver. So there. I got to meet him a couple times. And and so he's like, next year, come to our, do the workshop. Like, you take a week off because these guys take a yeah. vacation a week. And they work all day for an entire week and create these icons it's pretty amazing so i was cool. planning on doing it and then COVID hit and i was like well i don't know if we can do that and also well, i was gonna do that but he's like come on out he's like, he might be too busy. so he was really nice he's really nice yeah. genuine guy yeah and uh so i he used to like connect like he used to respond to me a little bit more on social media but he's got too many followers now he's just too uh he can't respond so i like i him know but, yeah. and i, no, I don't he, know if i have anything to offer him best. Either. I, really, I know. You know what I mean? Like you have to have some. You have to have some sort of cachet. Well, well, for, to, for me, for for me, I I only ask someone to talk if I like. I like for him. I remember I got that that chat with him, um, and I I spewed all of my wait. What about this and this and this? Yeah, you know, for my, <laughs> my symbolism stuff. And then I was like, okay, I think I'm good. Okay, now I'm a little bit known to him. But yeah. I don't want to talk to him again until I have something. Yeah, exactly. You know, you've got to have a thing that you're like, I have this thing. 
that I actually think yeah. it's not no one else might well not no one else but like that I want to specifically speak to, to you that I don't think other people are asking like I had him with Paul Vanderclay on to talk about his Peterson discussion right but 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 like it was in the context of with Paul Vanderclay as well you know so I I thought that might be a little bit more unique having the two of them on You're- together. But we mentioned this before. Your cachet is like you're a normie like me, so you don't really have a. <laughs> but you're not afraid no, to but admit I'm it. I'm a curious person, and I don't but, mind being like, "What's going on?" I don't. Well, understand. there's this woman that hired me at my my current job. She's like she's a VP of communications at the time, and I work for a mining company. There's a lot of really smart engineers there, mostly men, right? And mm-hmm. and I was doing communications work with her, and I sit around the room, and and she'd ask. She has no mining background herself, just. She works in the sort of administration, corporate part of things. But what I admired about her was she asked really good, dumb questions. She's like, mm. talk to me like I'm an idiot. What do you mean by that? And yeah. she would do that. And then she would actually, usually the real story would come out after. Because these guys were talking at their high levels to each other in the language that they understand, the jargon they understand. Mm-hmm. And it took someone like that to have enough courage to say, I don't understand what the hell you're talking about. Explain it to me like I'm an idiot. And, and, and puts herself out there because they, they must be saying, well, she's an idiot. But almost always she was right. Like she, she was she was realizing there's something up that they weren't telling us. And I think you have that ability. You kind of have that ability to be like, I'm not afraid to look like an idiot. And I don't think you look like an idiot. But I think you, you're kind of concerned about that. But would be presented as an like, And the guy's like. Do I even look like a dummy? Oh, I guess I did. Whoops. Well, you're a pleasant enough person that people are willing to offer it Give to me you the time of day. Yeah. and without but, being and you're not being a dick about it like you're trying I to inter- no no i need the interpretation like can you exactly it to me please so that i understand well the, and also yeah. i i take it as a compliment in a sense like like with father andrew with my discussion with father andrew who was one of the lord of spirits um hosts yeah i i honed in on something he brought up that he's like yeah i don't know much about this it was the uh, christianity bringing in pagan items mm-hmm um and having them within the context of like christendom then right he talked about it a couple times um about how like he, this was not explored very much and he wanted to look into it more mm-hmm. that piqued my interest and i was like i want to talk to him about that that i wanted to talk to them in general but i'm like i can't just be like hey talk to me about your lord of spirits podcast yeah you know like so... yeah, it's it, you've got to have a <laughs> like i mean jonathan yeah. Pajot can do that with them like, hey, talk to me about your new Lord of Spirits con- like, like, you know, podcast from like back when I was first coming yeah. out. But I knew I needed an angle. And so I I I wrote him and I, I I said, Hey, can I can I talk to you about this particular subject that you said that you haven't really gone gone into? And he's like, No one's asked me about this before. Yeah, I remember You're that. You have to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. And so then he had to, it was a couple of weeks of of sort of going back and forth, but yeah, he did. And then he said he used it as an outline for a talk sometime, like the, uh, from our talk. And so yeah. I was like, yay, I'm so glad I was curious about something no one else was curious. And not about. not afraid to put yourself out there and look right. like a fool. <laughs> Potentially, right? Or feel that way. But, but honestly, it's a question I'm nobody's asking. A, I'm a That's what the fool does, because right? I'm a woman as well. Because I, yeah. I feel like... How do I say this? This is going to be delicate. <laughs> I don't want to make it look like, oh, yeah, those girls are fine to look dumb. I don't mean it like that. No. I don't mean it that like, oh, because guys are like too prideful to look dumb. I don't want to mean it like that either. There is a bit of an ego issue with men. Yeah. Like you were saying how it was a gal that you. It's a woman. Noticed. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's and, a woman. And, so, yeah. and, and like for women, there's a sort of disarming. Hey. And I don't want to be like, can you like tell me? Mm-hmm, I don't get it. Like I don't want to yeah, be like a, like an actual dumb dumb. But yeah. like being like, hey, I ego no ego because I don't have one because I'm a girl. Like in the, in my in, in yeah. your arena. Yeah. You know, and I talk with women too, but like yeah. particularly it ends up being like fell, fellas <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. the fellas. Yeah. And and it is like, hey, I I don't even have one of those to put aside. I don't have an ego to put aside. So you don't even need to let worry about your flaring up, yeah. Because you're you're like, you're just talking to me. It's fine. I'm I'm not looking for you to be smart to me. Yeah, you know, or to prove anything. That's what the main is. There's no proving anything. You're, I, I just I'm like, hey, can you explain? 
Well, and yeah. Like, okay. So many things on lines are like people just trying to one up each other. And again, it's the, the fighting right. of egos. You know, I was just reading Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle. You know, he wrote The mm-hmm. Power of Now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, just I've heard about that. Read of him the other night. And uh, his passage in there is like people fight to be right because it's actually, a, it's they're protecting their ego. And if they're wrong, it's actually a form of them. They, they perceive it as a part of them dying. You're actually dying. It's a fear of death yeah. that prevents people from from exposing themselves like that. That making them vulnerable and making themselves feel like they could be wrong. And they're not vulnerable. Like, who cares if I'm wrong? But the point is, you feel like right, you're but wrong. it feels like it. Oh, when I was wrong about 38. The eight and, stabbed by the that. The eight, eight and thing, 30 you know. thing with my kids. Exactly. I remember with the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Wait, isn't Sorry. it 83? Oh, it's 38. Eight oh of 30. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm so dumb and, and it was my kids who were right. Right. So I think you it's bring okay. that. It's okay. It's okay. Mom makes mistakes. <laughs> So I think that um, that that's an appeal for you, and I'm happy that take advantage of that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good for you. That's your sort of yeah, advantage. It works well. It works well for my style and for what I'm doing. And yeah, and I do have like this this curiosity that is helpful, and it is interesting because uh, like however many years ago when all this was just happening. So I had so for my I started off as well. I have a degree in Christian studies and a minor right. in history um, in Christian history. So that's my like educational background it's just a bachelor's but it's like okay that and then i got married and worked a little bit but then i had kids yeah and then so and then peterson comes along and it's like oh my goodness my intellectual life is getting stirred yeah and then i start this podcast and or youtube channel and um and then i have all of these intellectual sort of flare-ups of Mm -hmm. i need answers you know and so i was interviewing I wouldn't put them out at this rate, but I'd sometimes be interviewing people two, sometimes three times a week. Wow. And then I would Jeez. just have a backlog for ages because I was wow. just interviewing so many people. Yeah. Um, but then I'd say about a, a year, year and a half I was in, I started to kind of slow down to, to where it was just like once a week. And then it slowed down where I almost start felt feeling bad that I wasn't releasing something every mm-hmm. week. And, and I really felt a bit of anxiety over it. And then I just yeah. decided, well, you know what? It's okay. You Again, I'm not beholden to anyone. I don't have a Patreon that I'm uh, owing yeah, people right. episodes. Yeah. And and it was my own ter- internal, like, why do I have to do it every week? Like, it's okay. If it's, sometimes it's even once a month, like, you know, if I'm, like, really busy. Like, I have three kids, Yeah. They're, you know? <laughs> like, they're, they're just now a little getting older. And, and in school, my youngest is in kindergarten, but like before right. they were young and it, it yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's, um, it's something that I've sort of, I've slowed down on the, I need information. Mm-hmm. And cause when I was, when I first interviewed Jonathan, I say that was not this past February, but the February before, and I was still like in, I was like, I was yeah. moving out of the intellectual dark web space materialist worried about your rights space Mm -hmm. into the symbolism space that i I, it was a bit of a pulling me up up out of uh flatland as one of my friends calls it Uh, um (laughs) the materialist space and so the symbol symbolic world gave me um that's jonathan's um youtube channel he calls it he he gave me a three-dimensional look at reality right that i had it had been squished you know which is fine before it was like a, a space i was going through but yeah. um, but yeah, so that, that's why I was like symbolism, all the things. Ah, and the thing I wanted to understand the most about was the feminine, because mm. I I grew up without a dad, and I feel like you kind of need a nice right. strong dad to sort of understand the feminine, which is weird. But yeah. you know, like you you need to know your opposite to know what you are in that you know yeah. space. I, I guess you know, and um, so I, I I just was like I don't get it, I don't understand it. But then as COVID you know started getting in an upswing and I started joining in the online discord groups. It, the one that I was particularly involved in was called Bridges of Meaning. And there was some gals there and they right. sort of started a knitting group. And oh, so when okay. I talked to this yeah. about this a little bit on my, my channel, but I started knitting and I didn't think I was going to learn to knit. I just, at first I started just mending buttons of things I'd been needing to, you know, just I'm like, oh, sure. guys, it's just too hard. I can't learn how to knit. Yeah. That's too hard for me. I'm not going to be able to learn. <laughs> But then they were like, you know what? We're gonna do an official learn to knit time. Okay. Like where we're gonna, we're just gonna be teaching the first basics 
and and just try it. like just come and you can do it and it was so amazing having these so these two gals these two like mentor sort of type gals telling me and it's me and, and, and a, a couple other gals another friend in particular i haven't in mind like telling us you can do it like you just come you'll i know you'll be able to do it and it was like <laughs> okay I'll, I'll try you know sure. and so yeah. then i come and then i learn to knit and then i i'm not knitting at an advanced level by any means yeah but we would have knitting club and i would just knit like during this time while and I, I've knitted a little baby blanket for mm. my my niece. I'm on, and then my my, my um, I'm gonna have another nephew soon, so I'm knitting another blanket for him. Right. You know, and it's sort of like I okay. So it's not just that. There's other things too. Part of it is like the vintage dressing, vintage thing that kind of came about. Like you were saying, how COVID's actually been kind of good in a way for you. Like yeah. certain things have been happening for you in that way. That's yeah. good for me. COVID. So last December, I started my instagram my vintage instagram okay and so that was when i really started um and, and i didn't plan on it but i i've ended up just i wear vintage clothes every day like i just i or styles but more or less i, I buy vintage like only from thrift stores or from etsy and right. so i re wear vintage stuff all the time it's a lifestyle like i wear i wear hats you know out i curl my hair all the time mm -hmm. um so i i i am participating in a space that is the thing I was trying to get my hands on with Peugeot on the symbolism. I'm like, yeah. I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to get it. I don't understand, you know. And then, but then uh, this past year, since I spoke with him, I have been acting it out, and part, which okay. is kind of what Peugeot is like. Now I know I have to explain it because it's a YouTube channel, and and so much of the symbolic has been forgotten. But he's like, even I, me explaining it is dissecting it in a way but i kind of have to to get the, the point across but mm -hmm. so, so I, I get why he has to explain it but but the thing about the symbolic and comprehending it is living it right and it's participating it yeah. with it and so for me for my so i suppose i'm trying to kind of i'm really doing a meandering job of it <laughs> but explaining no. how is my podcast or how's my youtube channel going how are my interviews going How's my style changed? Well, and I'm just making up those questions. I don't know if you asked me. I just made them up. <laughs> well, I'm getting to that. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I, I think that maybe yeah. you mentioned at the beginning, and so I've had it in my head. But I have, I'm not as, oh, let me talk to the person. I'm a little bit more, oh, I'm going to participate in it. And I'm just doing it. Hmm. I'm living it. And I'm participating in it. And I'm I'm really thinking over who I want to talk to and like what sort of questions I have and wonderings. And it's not as rapid as it was before, because I think before I was going in a very Western sort of uh, logic driven, not logic driven, but like. Uh, re materialist. Left brain. Yeah, materialist, Aristotelian, left brain. <laughs> yeah, left yeah. brain sort of <clears throat> way of going about getting and gathering information. Sure. Yeah. And now I'm going about it in the more artistic, right brain, feminine, actually, um, participatory way of uh, yeah. gathering information. And that's by existing in it and participating in it. In it. And I love it. Like, I, I, so much of it, so much of it has been wrapped together. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't think, oh, okay, so I'm going to dress vintage and then I'm going to learn to knit. And that's definitely, like, part of my feminine journey. Like, I wouldn't have thought that. I wouldn't have oh, these are the things I need to do. I wouldn't yeah. have planned it. It just ended up happening, you know? So yeah. anyway, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, no, it I, does. I've been, and that's why how my, my, my thing is sort of, my podcast has kind of slowed down because I've slowed down in my existing, in my living, in my participating with the things that I was really seeking after and trying to understand about mm -hmm. myself. I've been um, I've been sort of slowing down. And well, I think you've been finding forward. what you're looking for. I think it hasn't that been part of it? Like you've been, yeah, you're kind of everywhere. Now you're kind of it's starting to crystallize and give you a little bit of a direction that maybe you didn't have. That's two a years good way ago. of putting. It. Yeah, yeah, because you, yeah. you're always wanting to learn. Yeah. You're right, it, yeah. and this is actually I I recorded a, a New Year's chat, which I'm deciding I think I might want to upload it at some point. Okay, um, but I I I said something about how for just in general about a hobby 
like that I've learned it, even though I've I'm doing vintage clothes but it's I think any hobby you sort of and then not just hobby but like way about of going about life you kind of cast a wide net when you're interested in something yeah. but then slowly but surely it becomes refined and you sort of like understand like oh I don't actually even like that style within the umbrella that I was looking at I actually am going to go in this direction yeah so yeah I guess well, I'm, mat I'm maturing that's pretty cool actually you're talking about the feminine though it it what brought actually what spurred me to get in touch with you because I was thinking about people I can talk with Anyways, um, you're on. I have a list of like 50 people, and you're on the list. But, oh, nice. Well, what spurred it was your conversation with Neil DeGrade. Now, Neil DeGrade is a musician. Um, yes. He's out of Florida, I guess he is. He and his wife are musicians. Their their band's called the Dirt Poor Robins. Jonathan Benjot is a big fan of theirs. He's the one that kind of introduced yeah. him to our little space, and yeah. uh, it's pretty cool. It's a kind of weird eclectic music, but uh, very. Uh, interesting for sure like it's 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 nice to kind of delve into it and just listen to it over and over again find the little pieces they're they're really i find them very fascinating mm -hmm. and now he's he moved in and he's starting to make this little short film yes um he's releasing it in six parts or something like that and it's sort of a it's sort of a queen of the night it is called, called queen, queen of, of the, the night. night and you can find it at dirt poor robins on youtube and he did all the soundtrack for it and he's, he's he wrote it and directed it so he's released the very first the introduction to it and it's sort of a very fantastic sort of vision of this child that's living in let's say i don't know 100 years ago or i don't know where it was 80 years yeah, ago. yeah i would say it takes place probably in well the boy grows up and then it shows him later so i think it probably time, takes so. place in like the night like 1915 then picks sure. up like maybe 1920 yeah yeah i'm Something being like way that. too specific but. but what he's doing though is exploring the feminine mm. right that's what he was kind of talking about because he has an interest in that as well too and in feminine and fairy tales and in myth mm. and those types of things that's what this queen of the night is and so you see the associations really early on about like this little boy runs into this sort of fairy like creature i don't know what this person is and then mm -hmm. and then encounters this beautiful music in the and sees the moon out there and he sings memento mori that's that's one of the mm -hmm. phrases which means you know uh always remember death right which is a christian mm -hmm. it's, it's, oh, i didn't a, know that's what it meant okay oh yeah i'm big into this kind of stuff so <laughs> so because that's the feminine is actually the realm of death too right and then like because we well, the realm below i suppose yeah the realm of the night rise up yeah, and we come back yeah. down right that's sort of the way the symbolic pattern kind of works there too and it's nothing to do with feminism and has nothing to do with like the female traits or nothing but it's it's how myth and has been traditionally it's how it trade. works it's the pattern right and so he's exploring that but i've had a lot of interest in the feminine as well too and i was i actually took it from the game of thrones books i'm a huge fan of the mm -hmm. book or at least i've read the books like you, okay books. i am i am and the tv show by okay. those books no you, i don't like them? them i well, like them enough to read them but it it left me pessimistic it's very cynical it's a yeah. very cynical book that's why lord of the rings is so much yeah. more superior oh i would How say they're a better book it. for sure and i think you get a yeah. lot more meaning out of it but what but what's interesting about the game of thrones is that they steal all this they, they take all these myth myths and, and legends and, and put them in a book as well too and build all these this world out of these myths and legends but when you do that you're also stealing the symbolism and I think rightly or wrongly, or I think George Martin maybe understood that or doesn't understood that, but that's in there. So I see, I see a lot of this sort of, the sort of dark destructive nature of, of humanity in this kind of like the only the bad side of it, but there's a lot mm -hmm. of symbolism, of the feminine. So they have these weirwood trees. You have these, uh, you know, these magical trees and these sort of wizards called green seers who are kind of impaled onto these trees and then they perform magic. Well, the weirwood tree in that sense is a feminine structure oh yeah I guess. and then the sky is oh. the mass and it joins in there and by joining that up they they kind of uh they kind of grow together or like uh, the stark's words are uh winter is coming well what's winter is coming mm -hmm. it means death is coming that's death, what they're saying right, right. M memento mori that's what they're saying remember death don't don't ever forget oh. that kind of stuff and they oh, live in the stark okay. part of the north against this wall and where all these these sons of lords wherever else or criminals they get sent up there for life they're essentially getting sent to die up there so these are all dead men living on the boundary mm -hmm. between life and death that which is in the right. far north and then right, right, right. he's got these white walkers are coming in but nobody believes them these white walkers is a threat that's like 
death is coming death is coming and we right right don't, as a don't people miss it. have forgotten about that we forget about yeah that. and that's what the I whole story is like about. the books but i do like what you just said no fair still, enough yeah i still am disenchanted <laughs> i shouldn't say i don't like them i'm yeah. disenchanted by them they are which is the opposite of what a fantasy series should do which i think enchanting i think his issue is that he tried to uh he tried to put a lot of modern thought he tried to make it real and that's not what they're for and it, but I think it's getting subverted by the fact that he has all this myth in there and he can't overcome the fact that all that myths in there and there's truths in there. And I think that's why he's having trouble writing his book. It doesn't work. Finishing him up because he can't finish him up because he realizes it's inevitable it that the pattern is going to subvert what he's trying to do because he can't beat the pattern. Like, like Pajo tells you, like it's, you try to beat the pattern, but the pattern's always there. And then, it, and, and then it's bad if you try to change it. And if, if if you want to be true to true, you have to like recognize it. I don't think George Martin wants to do that. And so <laughs> and that's, that's a good insight as to why it's taking so flipping long to I think so. Because I really I was just so I, I hated the ending of the the movie the, the Well the movie, sh the, the show series. was they went past they, the books anyways though, right? They like, did, I know, and then they so. did their whole like let's like make not the hero be the, like let's make the hero not be the hero in the end. They didn't understand like, didn't, the story. Like, yeah, like you know, but but that's probably the point is like the fact that you're saying about how he's getting tripped up is yeah. probably because he wants to. He probably is like, oh, I have to end it exactly. Where he's the one because he has to be the one because why else did he come back to that? Like <laughs> because the, and the showrunners were like, yeah. let's just like make him like not be the one to kill the Night King or like, that'll be cool, right? Like there let's was make no the coherence girl. at all at the end. And of it's it. like, well, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Oh, we'll we'll have him kill Daenerys. Don't worry. But like, we'll have like Arya kill kill yeah. the Viking. That makes no sense. And our George R. R. Martin knows that makes no sense. Yeah. But he probably also is kind of stuck where he's like, exactly. but wait, am I just going to do the predictable thing? You know. But yeah. it's like he's trying to subvert the trope. Cynical, I know, but he did. He can't. He can't he do it. himself into a corner because he's yeah. like, I'm so cynical, but also I guess I have to be typical now. And just do the thing, the Christ-like yeah. redemption thing. Which <laughs> exactly. he's like, I didn't want to do it. And so I'm just going to write back. Exactly my thesis. That's exactly it, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's kind that of where I'm at with that. Nerdy, that was a nerdy little, little trailer. It was. So anyways, I have an interest in that part of it. It's yeah. like, oh, man. Because I'm thinking about the feminine all the time. I've, I've read, uh, I have all these books I've been buying, too. I got um, Eric Neumann. Like, Peterson talked about him. He's a I've heard about him, yeah. He's got, uh, a disciple of Carl Jung. He, he studied yeah, he, under, he, did he talk he wrote a book about the the like the yeah Indian feminine like the yeah it's called the great, it's the great mother it's great mother yeah book. yeah i've heard about it and the his big yeah. book was called i'm just looking at it right now the origins and history of consciousness so he's big on consciousness right. and he did right. as much as anybody else just kind of join like psycho psychological terms with mythology and just understanding it like um joseph campbell did a bit of it but but this guy is, I think, is a little bit more in depth and a little more mm -hmm. uh, cohesive. So, anyways, mm -hmm. uh, I read, I'm reading those kind of books. I'm reading a lot of these uh, books about the feminine and in and, and myth and all that kind of stuff too. So then I recognize that in, in the Game of Thrones thing, I've written some essays on it, and it's kind of fun. But then I heard you con conversation with Degrade. Is like, you know, what? I'm going to get a hold of Degrade. I'm going to see if he wants to talk about that at all because I think he might find it interesting. Because yeah. I'm interested in his own point about that as well too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I need to rewatch that one. That's that you were talking about what, listening to conversations again. I need to yeah. listen to that one again because I think there was a lot there that I could glean again. I yeah, I listen to it have twice. A second like, listening. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Because it's because the point. I think that the thing that I'm learning about the feminine and as to why it was so hard to grasp mm -hmm. is because that's its nature. The nature of the right. feminine is hidden. Yeah. There's a, like uh, and it's yeah. very, down to the very anatomy of male and female. Yeah, I sometimes the material does line up very well with the symbolic. For sure, and, it does. Know, yeah. and, and well, even like a, a a baby being knit together in his, in his mother's womb. Yeah, you know, it's like that's hidden. It's a hidden mystery, and yeah. Um, and yeah. So so understanding um, the feminine is hard because it is implicit. Whereas the masculine is explicit. Right. So you can explain sure. yeah. the masculine all you want. And it's like, great. I comprehend <laughs> it now. But like, all oh, right. How do I explain the feminine without turning it masculine by explaining it? Because I'm literally doing yeah. the thing that is the opposite of it. And I don't know if it's the opposite. Is it? 
Is it correct? Well, I find that there's a lot of well, the like, well, the other is, side of the coin. Yeah, yeah. Well, I find that the gray was got to the point. Jonathan Pajo talks about that too, with sort of feminist retellings of these hero stories. Is all you do is turn the woman into the man, and then making her. It's all they're doing. It's so uninteresting. And it's, it's like so boring, and I don't is. like it. But when it's done properly, or at least better, like it, it works well. Like I, I didn't mind Wonder Woman so much, at least the first one, because like she's a very feminine character. I you know she's like big her, and strong. Yeah, yes, yes. But she didn't try to like naive. She didn't try she's to very, uh, unknowing and naive. Uh, but she didn't try to emasculate working. the man, I guess. Like her, yeah. Chris Pine is her love interest. She supported him as well too, and then like she sort of she, her, she didn't want him to die, and she was like emotional about it. Yeah, they they did, yeah. definitely didn't play down her feminine parts as like like her naivety was endearing, and it yeah. wasn't cringy at all. It was like no, this is how she would be. She's li been living on an island forever with all these women forever. Yeah, she has no idea what society would be. Of course, she'd be this way. Yeah, um, so it, it it's so it it can be done properly or at least better than it has been. So. Yeah. So I agree with you there on that. So, anyways, I found that conversation really good. I'm gonna probably go back. To, I'm gonna get a hold. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna email him. I guess I don't know how I'm gonna get a hold. Of that yeah. No. Anyway. Go. Well, Facebook is how you get a hold. Or Twitter. Of this Facebook on him. No. No. Facebook. Facebook's the best. I'd say. Okay. Probably. I can do that too. Yeah. Yeah. Message. <laughs> yeah. Message over. Yeah. Yeah. Message over Facebook. Yeah. Well. Um, you know yeah. yeah, so this has been really good here, Andrew. I don't know if yeah. you want to keep talking. I can talk all night, all day. Well, right? yeah, I know. This is one of those <laughs> things where it's like, well, we could. And I know, like, there, there's definitely topics. I do, I have to say, I appreciate that you do come to the um, Symbolic World group for um, Lord of Spirits because yeah. it has dwindled so much. And I think I need to remind people it still technically exists. So I, I, but I, I, so I don't need a lot of people. It's nice. It's like, oh, Rob showed up. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> you can chat. It's, it's nice to have someone just to chat with about the about the latest the latest discussion. Um, yeah, no, I I do need to get going, but because I, I I mean, my husband's just been with the kids, but I probably should go up and be like, hey, what are we doing today? There's one thing I was going to tell you. You asked this before we started re recording as well. But you asked about this paint this painting back here. Yeah, I did. I, it looks almost like it's a kind of like a prairie, like an abstract prairie. My what previous podcast was with my friend Billy Ray Busby. She's in Calgary. And she does these beautiful uh -huh. abstract paintings. They're abstract, called hard edge landscaping with tape, paint. It just creates oh, these cool. beautiful images, just mountains. Or she's actually doing a bunch of work on um, on the Northern Lights, and she just plays with cool. colors and sort of textures and and all that stuff. And she's just amazing. I just I went to university with her. She's just a good friend of mine. But she's based in Calgary, and I'm not sure where you live in Calgary, but if you know in the Beltline area around 17th, mm -hmm. they have these Jersey barriers that are up that are all painted up. Have you ever noticed that? The Jersey barrier, no. those those concrete barriers that are blocking off the sidewalks so people can have sidewalk cafes. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So she was commissioned to actually do like six of these things. So if you see these sort cool. of weird triangle, beautiful images on these things, that's her doing that, so... Um, cool. Well, how about, well, you didn't tell me. Is it a like? What is it up? Like That's, you didn't answer it. Well, I believe it's a prairie sky. The way she talks about it, though, it could be just okay. anything. But I think it's a prairie sky. But it's 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 all abstract. So it's it's oh, and so it's, it's also not from you see. It's whatever you see. And exactly. You yeah. It. Yeah. She's an amazing okay. painter. So I see a little bit of the sky, a little bit of cloud, a little bit of a sort of obscure in the sun that kind of pops out of there. But she well, just I think it's the flat. Things. It's sort of that flat. I, I, it yeah. has a prairie flatness about it. So that's what yeah. I mean. It's just yeah. a nice little painting. And I've been wanting one of her paintings for a while. I finally picked it up. Well, my Yay. last trip to Calgary, I finally picked it up. It's because I have a spot for it. And now it's in the background. I need to do, I need to do something more. Than... I well, like the background, but I need to have some visuals. I need to figure yeah, out. I love your background too, but yeah, it's nice to change it. It up. It is good. It's it's very recognizable, but it's just a little bit boring. So I think I need to spruce it up. But. Well, I'm slowly adding to mine. I'm gonna put a bookshelf back there eventually, and there's a few. Other, this is actually my office, so this is where I talk yeah. to you when we do yeah. a Discord space, and then my my work right. is right here. So. so it's the space. Well, it's nice to like pretty up the space. Yeah, homey it up. And that's my space. uncle. He made that painting long long time ago. Oh, that's it's nice. Sort yeah. of a... Yeah, I want to have something like a big... Yeah, this is bar. this, and that's that, and yeah. these are just panels of wood for me. Anyway, okay, but... Okay. Gonna, I think I think we're wrapping up now, right? Well, we're thank you very much for joining us. Now.